Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on a camping journey for my lost files through Lincoln County, Nevada. The video is a mashup of three separate trips. The first trip was with my husband and myself on an overnight trip to Panaca, Nevada at the Cathedral Gorge State Park Campground. The first thing we did when we arrived after finding our preferred site and paying our fee was took a walk around the campground and got familiar with our surroundings and then unpacked, set up our tent and prepared dinner. The campground has 22 sites, flush toilets, and quarter showers. Each site is equipped with shade ramadas, picnic tables, grills, and fire rings. For dinner, we used our Coleman Classic two burner stove to cook squash, zucchini, asparagus, and kielbasa with onions, peppers, and garlic, and ended the night with some adult beverages and uno. With any state park camping, you should expect to pay a cash fee. For this park, we paid $5 as well. Expect that cathedral quiet hours are from 10 to seven. And if you have a fear of lizards, this is not the campground for you. The next day, we woke up, ate some breakfast, cleaned up our site, and took off exploring the nearby day use area. There is an additional $5 fee to access this area due to the slots and access to the four mile hiking loop. The day use site is directly adjacent to the campground and is super easy to get to. We're in the slots caused by volcanic activity. The slots are made of slit stone and clay formed by volcanic activity covering more than 1,600 acres and offers a dramatic landscape. This trip was in mid-July, so the temperatures during the day did reach 92 plus degrees with a no breeze and the sun was in full UV effect. I must warn you, if you are claustrophobic, the slots are definitely not for you. They are very thin, and in areas it's really hard to squeeze through. It's literally like a labyrinth. Again, there is a hiking trail 
but unfortunately it was just too hot for us to venture. Once we experienced the slots, we took our time exploring and venturing down off roads and stopping at nearby little nature attractions along the way. Here we are seen heading down a 25 mile dirt road to check out the Beaver Dam State Park. At 5,000 feet in elevation and surrounded by ponderosa pines, willows, and cottonwood. Beaver Dam formed from volcanic activity and erosion over 10 million years ago and was established in 1935 as a state park. About 20 miles into the abandoned windy dirt road is a railroad track. There is also an established campground and many dispersed camping areas to enjoy total solitude and social distancing. It took us like 26 miles to get out here and we've seen two vehicles. That's it. Like literally in the middle of nowhere. We did end up turning around and came back out the road we initially drove down and made our way down US 93 North towards Alamo, Nevada, an unincorporated ranching town with a population of just over a thousand residents. The gas station in Alamo features alien memorabilia and has murals for fun photo ops lining the outside of the building. We also passed through Paranagant National Wildlife Refuge, a protected wildlife refuge about 90 miles from Las Vegas. Visiting gives you the opportunity to see meadows, marshes, lakes, streams, and desert in one generalized area. There is also free campsites and beautiful water to enjoy fishing. We really enjoyed our first trip in Lincoln County. There were so many beautiful natural stone and rock formations and the sky at night was on a whole nother level. There's absolutely no way that I could capture this magnificent planetarium that twinkled and shined down creating light all around us. Next is trip number two, my husband and mine's anniversary two-nighter in August of 2020. We were initially aiming to camp in Great Basin National Park, drove almost 300 miles in about five hours, only to find all campgrounds and campsites filled. It was kind of a bummer at first, but then we just decided to turn around and head back towards Panaca, Nevada, and find ourselves a private, low-key area on BLM land, preferably before the sun went down. The dispersed camping location was perfect in the sense that we were totally alone. We had just enough time to prepare and eat dinner before the sun finally set for the night. So we thought, <laughs> we'll get back to that in a few. We went ahead and made steak and veggies and it did start to get a little chilly. So we took out our catalytic heater and jammed out to some classic rock as we watched the sunset and the moon ascend over the sky. so we ended up leaving the dispersed camping site this morning um, not the best experience dispersed camping completely different you know habitat and ecosystem over here in this part of Nevada um, long story short we found a tarantula a scorpion and some coyotes <laughs> so we um, decided to come back to Cathedral we don't want to go all the way back to Great Basin and not have an open camping site and there's like literally nobody here today which is perfect. We got a nice little spot. It's absolutely beautiful. And yeah, so once we're done breakfast, we're just gonna get um, dressed for the day, get ready. And then I think we're gonna go on the cathedral hike.
We ended up spending majority of the day just hanging out around the campsite, soaking up the sun and playing dominoes and uno while enjoying some adult beverages. After lunch, we decided to hop in the car and take a drive through the town of Panaka. The town of Panaka is an unincorporated town in Nevada near the Utah border, established in the 1820s. Panaka is a Mormon farming town and is the oldest surviving town in eastern Nevada. It features 19th century architect, and most of the town's people are direct descendants of the original settlers. The day was still young, so we went ahead and continued on our little road trip to Caliente, Nevada, the least populated incorporated city in Nevada, founded in 1901. We located a road that looped around the outskirts of Caliente, which took us down 20 miles of graded gravel road down Nevada 317. Eventually, we came to a railroad crossing and made our way to the Elgin Schoolhouse State Historic Site Museum, nestled in Rainbow Canyon. Did I mention it's 20 miles of windy scenic canyon views with no sign of life and we just stumbled upon a random historical museum? It was very interesting to say the least. The Elgin Schoolhouse was fully operational up until 1967 and served generations of children living in the area. We did end up staying a second night on the trip at Cathedral. We got up to the site after playing tourist and road tripping and exploring all day really pretty late. We ended up cooking in the dark, eating, heading straight to bed. The sun had totally exhausted me and then we got up early, packed up and headed back to Vegas. We made one additional stop on the way back home to the Paranagan National Wildlife Refugee to stretch our legs for a bit and scout out potential free campsites. Although we didn't document it, we did return to Cathedral a third time before the summer ended with the entire family, and we had an absolute blast. The last trip we took on this video to Lincoln County was in early September with my husband and children. This time we switched things up a bit and camped at the Echo Canyon State Park a 65 acre reservoir and is a great destination for fishing and boating. We did get a little turned around on our way down the 12 mile paved road and ended up bypassing the campsite altogether. We realized quickly as the road got more and more remote, but it wasn't a total waste with wildlife at every corner and plenty of nature landscapes to admire. By the time we found our way to an open site, the sun had already set, but it didn't stop us from having a ton of fun. We cooked dinner, played games with the kids, and stargazed by the open fire while enjoying some adult beverages. These campsites are equipped with drinking water, full hookups, and overlook of Dry Valley. 
flush toilets, and showers. There are also two separate sides to this campground, one primarily for RVs, where the showers are located, and a separate side with 33 sites for both RVs and tent camping. The next morning, the sun was shining and the weather was in the high 80s, a perfect day for exploring the park, playing games, and conversating amongst one another. We enjoyed some breakfast and then decided to take the kids on a little road trip adventure with the weather really heating up and the lack of shade. We ventured out towards Alamo, Nevada, making a few stops along the way to capture some great photo ops. When we returned, we made dinner, took a walk, and watched the sunset. These pictures and videos don't even capture how truly radiant and colorful the sky was, but oftentimes pictures don't do justice. We finished the night playing some Harry Potter Uno and taking in the moon and stars before zipping off to bed. The following day, we decided to continue exploring the nearby areas to see what nature was awaiting us. We ate some breakfast, picked up camp, took showers, got dressed, and headed out in the direction of home, making stops along the way. I must say, every time I have went to Lincoln County, I've fully enjoyed myself. There are so many public campgrounds, as well as plenty of BLM land for dispersed camping. There are plenty of historic ghost towns, wildlife, wilderness, and vast selections of terrain. If you are ever in Lincoln County and you're looking for exploration and serenity, I would highly recommend any of these many state parks that they have to offer. My favorite is Cathedral Gorge. Whether it's a solo trip, you or your partner or your family, or it's a group affair, there is a niche for everyone and beauty all untouched by humans is all around. Thank you for watching and coming along. I hope you enjoyed the mashup through Lincoln County and I hope it encourages you to get out and explore nature. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe for more fun adventures with Tasia.